All right, hello everybody. <clears throat> hello, hello, and welcome. How is everyone? It is Tuesday, March twentieth, twenty eighteen. I am Dark Side Phil. How is everybody? <clears throat> I certainly hope you're doing well, and I welcome you to my first of two gameplay streams for the day. Who boy? <laughs> And what an ordeal this one was to even get set up and working, and hopefully it works. Reason being that I'm saying that is because I'm doing a lot of things today that I normally do not do. Um, on my, you know, my daily gameplay streams. I am out of my comfort zone, ladies and gentlemen. So we'll see what happens here. First of all, <clears throat> this is the premiere of my Sea of Thieves coverage, which released today, by the way, released last night. But people have been saying that it's very hit or miss. Sometimes it's great. It's amazing fun. And, you know, co-op with your friends, it's really awesome. Other people are saying, well, problem is the servers don't really work so well. Uh, here at launch, a lot of people seem to have been having connectivity issues. <clears throat> Woohoo. I guess it's par for the course for these new multiplayer-only games. Um, that you're going to have these kind of issues. All right. Now, I... Was not really planning on even doing voice chat or anything, but so many people contacted me and were like, Phil, no, this is the kind of game you absolutely need to have voice communications with your other people in your party, that if you don't, that it's not going to be very good. And I said, all right, well, I'm going to go out of my way here to try to figure this out. So I actually spent a significant amount of time today <laughs> trying to figure out how can I get the voice communications to work um, on the console. And the good news is... I had multiple options. I actually still have the original chat headset that came with the Xbox One at launch when I bought it. Um, so, worst comes to worst, I could have used that. Now, obviously, it only has one headphone, and it's a piece of crap. You don't want to listen to game audio through this chat headset, okay? Um, so, that was like last case, you know, worst case scenario. What else could I possibly do? Um, <clears throat> well, I did own, at one point... Uh, a set of headphones for the Xbox One called the Astro uh, Ear Force XO7s, all right? Now, these were just stereo headphones, but they were made at the launch of Xbox One to be a, a, a headset that's supposed to work exclusively with the console, you know, including voice chat and all of that. Um, <clears throat> so, I was trying to get that set up to work, and I realized, guess what? I don't have the adapter for it. It's supposed to have an adapter to work with the Xbox One controller. I don't know where the adapter is. Missing. And, I don't know where the microphone is for. <laughs> I thought everything, all this stuff should have been in the box, but I opened the box, the adapter's missing, and the microphone's missing. And I'm like, what the hell happened here? I have no idea where this shit could be. Now, I'm not saying I don't have it. I'm just saying it could be hidden anywhere in my office. Who knows? You know, I haven't used that headset <clears throat> since I lived in Connecticut. So, very, very possibly the adapter and all that stuff could be in a random bin in my closet. And I did look. I was, you know tearing apart uh, my closet, and I could not find it at all. I'm like, well, this is not going to work. Obviously, uh, I, but I could have sworn, I was thinking about it, and I was like, I could have sworn years ago when I knew I was going to have issues with the headphones on Xbox One because at launch, the thing wouldn't even work with standard headphones. Like, it didn't even have optical audio out surround sound or nothing. It was a, it was a mess at launch, okay? If you guys remember, it took about, uh, about a year almost. For the Xbox One to patch itself constantly and finally have all the features of a full-fledged console. While the PS4 had all that shit at launch. So, pretty silly, right? Uh, but, I, I could have sworn that back in the day, I had bought um, an adapter. I had bought the stereo headphone adapter for the Xbox One so that any headphones could work with the console. I could have sworn I bought it. And I'm like, man, where could this be? So, I'm digging, again, I'm digging through my closet. I know it's it's I know I bought it. I remember seeing it over the years. Okay. <clears throat> so I was doing all these things. Um and I couldn't you know, I'm like, where could it be? So I'm tearing apart my closet. Finally, I tweet and I'm like, I can't find it. I don't know what I'm gonna do with voice chat. I was all frustrated. And then I was like, wait a minute, I think I remember. And I I went to the corner of my closet, like in the back behind a box, there was a bag from Best Buy. And I opened the bag and there it is. Sitting right there along with a like a USB hub and a few other things that I had bought when I had first moved out here uh, to Washington State. And I was like, oh man, here it is. So I grabbed it, I plugged it in, and it works. I'm like, great, it's working with the controller, this is good. You know, it's being detected, this is excellent. 
But then I had the conundrum. I was like, well, what am I going to do? I don't have an Xbox One specific headset to work with this thing. And I don't know if I just plug any old headset in with a mic if it's going to work or not. Um, <clears throat> so I took my Astro A40TRs, which are I bought in the you know in November. And these are the PS4 version, meaning, you know, the the uh, the the mix amp that comes with it or whatever was supposed to be catered only to work with PC and PS4, not necessarily with the Xbox One. Um, and I'm like, I wonder what would happen if I just plug these into the stereo adapter that I got for the Xbox One controller. Let's see. So I plug it in and the audio works, but it's crappy stereo audio. It is what it is. There's nothing I can do about that. It looks like Whenever I play Sea of Thieves and I need voice communication, I'm just going to have to have stereo audio. No surround sound. Sucks. Um, <clears throat> so, I'm like, alright, whatever. It's a compromise. No big deal, I guess. It's not like I'm playing a first-person shooter where I need to hear someone creeping up behind me, right? Uh, not a big deal. So, I say, let's test this mic out. And as I start to go through the Xbox One console settings, I realize there's literally not a single setting or adjustment screen on the Xbox One whatsoever to test your microphone. Now, this is asinine to me. Um, I have, obviously you guys know, the PS4, and that's the console I use primarily for everything. The PS4 has a full-fledged Microsoft, or Microsoft, wow, microphone adjustment screen, where you can adjust the volume level on the fly, you can have sensitivity, all these things, and even shows you a microphone meter so you know how loud you're being into your mic, and you can adjust it so that other people who you're voice chatting with will sound it'll sound better. Okay? Um <clears throat> I'm just, you know, scratching my head here that the Xbox One has been out for four years. It came out in the, the late 2013. So actually it's four and a half years. They haven't figured out that you should have a microphone adjustment screen yet somewhere on the console. Figure that one out. The geniuses of Microsoft, right? Alright, like, alright, whatever. So now let me try and see what I can do with this. So I've, I, I set up a, a party, private party, invite only. All right. Then I try to send a message. So I'm like, gee, maybe I could send a message to someone with voice chat. So maybe that'll be a way to test my mic. So I hit send message and it says, well, you can either type your message or you can use your mic. I said, okay. So I held down the, the, the button that says use the mic and I started talking. I was like testing one, two, three, testing one, two, three. And it detected what I was saying on the screen and even said testing one, two, three. It typed it out for me. And I was like, all right, the microphone works. So I'm actually using a PlayStation 4 headset in the Astro A4 DTRs with the Xbox One. It seems to work if you own the stereo adapter. All right. So that's a good thing. However, there does not appear to be any way to adjust the volume of your mic. There does not appear to be any kind of configuration settings whatsoever. So I will apologize to everyone in advance, um, in particular those who are going to be co-oping with me, um, and who, who might be like, man, Phil's mic is really loud or low or whatever. It doesn't seem like there's anything I can do about it. <clears throat> there just doesn't seem to be any adjustment settings whatsoever for this thing. Um, and that's stupid in my opinion, but I guess it is what it is, right? Um... So, how is this going to work? You guys might be wondering, see if these, how's this going to work? How's Phil playing it? Um, <clears throat> I am doing co-op. There have been people who have been posting up on my forums on thekingofhate.com uh, for a couple of weeks now. And so it's first come, first serve, depending on when they actually posted up and requested to be a part of it. All right. So that being said, today, we've got three people who are going to be joining me. Joining me, We've got uh, the Warlord, Demonic Damien, and... Um, uh, tag are going to be joining me now. Of course, those aren't their gamer tags. I'm gonna, I'll send them a party invite once I finish pre-stream here. That's all it's going to work. I'll send them a party invite. We'll get into the party. We'll ch test our mics. Hopefully, they work. Then we'll all boot the game up and you know try to form a party and see what happens. Okay. <clears throat> so we'll see how this goes. We're going to be doing this all live. All right, doing it live. I don't know how it's going to work. You know, I apologize if the server. Some people are saying. Uh, the servers are fucked up, and so they're trying to play in the servers. They're dropping from the servers, or, or people are in parties, then they drop from the party, and then they come back. It, it's par for the course for launch day of a major multiplayer game. I mean, this happens with every single major multiplayer game on launch day. I don't think I've ever played in the past five years a multiplayer-focused game where the multiplayer worked properly in the first day. <clears throat> so, we'll see what happens. Hopefully it works. 
hopefully, um, you know, we have fun today. This very first co-op session. I don't know much about the game at all. Uh, overnight, I asked for some recommendations of what people thought I should be doing in the game. And a lot of people gave me say, oh, you should go to this town. Oh, you should talk to the three different factions. And, oh, you should you know, do this, do that. Um, the problem is, I haven't played the game yet, so I didn't really understand what anyone was telling me. <laughs> so it pretty much went right over my head. <clears throat> so I guess I'm going to be relying on if any of my uh, teammates, who I'm going to be co-oping with today, uh, have played the game at all and know what they're doing. And, uh, you know, kind of following them along a little bit until we figure out how to play the game. <clears throat> now, today is not the only session. I'm going to be playing this today, tomorrow, and Thursday. All right. What I'm hoping is that the game has enough content so that in three days' time, you know, we've seen a lot of the game and there's a lot of fun stuff to do. There's never any way to tell in games like this. There's maybe a game where I play it for four hours and I've seen everything. <laughs> Who knows? Or it could be a game where, you know, I play it for four hours, I've barely scratched the surface. There, you know, we're going to find out firsthand today as we play it live here. You know, that's kind of how it works. Um, <clears throat> so, let's see what happens. Uh, you know, hopefully it's good. Hopefully, as a co-op game with voice chat, it ends up being really entertaining. Um, I guess we'll see. So, ladies and gentlemen, that's the, that's the deal for the first stream, all right? Now, tonight, my second stream later tonight will be South Park, The Fracture But Holes... Story-based DLC about Casa Bonita. I haven't even downloaded it yet. In fact, I don't even know if it's available on PSN yet. I hope it is. If not, I'll have to pull an Audible. And probably tonight I'll be doing like PUBG or something like that. It all depends on if it's available. I hope it is because I do want to play it tonight. Reports are that it's only two hours long. But it seems like people who are saying that are people who have not done... Uh, like they didn't take their time. You know what I mean? Like they just rushed right through the story. Now, I don't know if there's any side content or anything to do in this DLC. If there is, then great. We'll, we'll take our time with it, much like I did with the, the the full game. Play it for a few streams this week till we finish it up on the late streams. If it's fast, if it's real quick, and we actually beat it in one or two sessions, then yeah, then I'll be mixing in another session, of like, like I said, like PUBG or Call of Duty or maybe Ultra Street Fighter 2. We'll see. We'll play it by ear. Or maybe I'll even just do more Sea of Thieves. All right, we'll see. Some people are here. Vendata said, actually, the DLC is about four to five hours if you take your time. So there you go. Um, so we'll see. <clears throat> Let's see what happens. All right, so that's today. Sea of Thieves and South Park. Tomorrow, same thing. Sea of Thieves and South Park. Although tomorrow, I will be inviting a different group of co-op partners to join me. I believe it's Ren Jesse James. And I believe there's two other people who said that they were, they're, they're friends, they're playing it together, and they wanted to see if they could get on one of my sessions. So that'll probably be tomorrow. I wrote it on my schedule last night. I don't have it in front of me here. So I guess we'll see. But should be fun. At least we've got new content. Finally, guys. I mean, we've been waiting how long? It's been... Holy shit. You know? There haven't been any big new releases since January. You know? And it's been so slow. I've been doing my best to entertain you guys with, you know downtime content of anniversary playthroughs of some of the biggest games I ever played that ended up being some of my best playthroughs and then doing, you know, PUBG, Call of Duty, and I just did Ultra Street Fighter 2, you know. I'm doing my best to try to keep you guys occupied. But it is what it is. I can't really, you know, I can't bring you guys to streams unless, you know, there's stuff to play. You know what I mean? There's I know I realize I have a hardcore fan base who want to watch me play whatever. No matter what I play, they don't care. They're here. And I'm very appreciative of you guys. I am. But I also realize there's many people who tune in whenever I play a new game. They want to see me cover a new release. And the fact that there certainly put have not been any high-profile new releases for about two months obviously is a big problem. Um, <clears throat> the good news is starting today, we've got Sea of Thieves and South Park. Uh, later this week, we've got Nino Kuni 2, which I will be playing. And then next week, we've got Far Cry 5 and the final episode of Batman. All right? So we've got... A lot of stuff, an absolute lot of stuff going on in the next two weeks that hopefully will keep you guys occupied and, uh, you know, entertained by my streams. So thanks for stopping by today to check out the premiere of Sea of Thieves. Very nice. All right, guys, now let's talk a little bit. Um, let's get through the stuff that I usually do on pre-stream. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to do some quick plugs. All right. And then after the quick plugs, we're going to do shout-outs for people who have cheered, subbed, and tipped so far on today's pre-stream. Okay? And then we're going to start with the game. What I'll do, like I said, I'll set up a party on Xbox Live here live with these guys. 
We'll make sure our voice chat's working, then we'll jump right into the game and we'll play it and see what happens. All right? <clears throat> I think the way it works is you actually invite through the game. So I think I have to boot the game first and then you can create a party in-game to invite the people. So I think that's what I'm going to do. All right. So, folks, here we go. Um, Let's do some quick plugs. All right? I want to say thank you to everyone who is very supportive, who's been really supportive, uh, you know, over the past year when I adopted a more live streaming interactive style of gameplay. Uh, <clears throat> you know, I do really do appreciate you guys coming out, checking out the streams on a regular basis, watching the videos on YouTube when you can't, and, you know, supporting in any way that you could. But if you want to go above and beyond being just a standard stream viewer or video watcher on YouTube, and you want to support my efforts to continue to do this full-time as a job, the way I've done for the past eight years, daily putting out free streams and video content for you. There are many ways that you can actually help out, all right? The first and primary way being, well, not, I don't want to say the primary, but the first of the, of the way that you can do it is to pledge to my Patreon. Go check it out. Head over to patreon.com forward slash dark side fail, all right? At my Patreon, you can contribute to my monthly pledging campaign. And if you do so, you earn yourself cool personal perks depending on what you pledge. Now, all of your pledges aid me directly in operating this business. The cost of paying electricity and internet, buying all these games, um, equipment, you know, that happens all the time. So equipment goes wrong. I just had to buy a new external hard drive. In the last month, I had to buy a new monitor. You know, stuff goes wrong all the time. And, you know, all that is helped. The cost of that is defrayed by your patron contributions. All right. But the cool thing is that when you contribute to Patreon, you earn stuff via personal perks depending on your pledge levels. Things such as text or verbal thank yous in my YouTube videos, being able to nominate and vote on games for my marathons and, and, and events that happen from time to time, getting your questions answered on my bi-monthly Q&A show, Ask the King, which is coming up in April, or <clears throat> getting a private Q&A video made. And people really seem to like these Q&A videos to the point where some people have liked them so much they've done it multiple times and gotten this perk, you know, several times because they like the video so much. But I'm not going to go into massive detail. Check it all out over at patreon.com forward slash dark side Phil. Thanks to everyone who does contribute. <laughs> And thank you guys uh, to anyone who is possibly considering contributing in the future. All right, it's number one. Number two, we've got Teespring, my merchandise shop where you can buy all kinds of fun stuff, including t-shirts, sweatshirts, hoodies, stickers, and mugs. Great quality stuff that I can attest to. I personally own a ton of stuff from my own Teespring shop that I wear on streams from time to time. I just wore two this past week. I wore two shirts. Um... But it's great stuff. And anything that you buy from my Teespring shop, I get a big, big, sizable commission from, so it helps me out. But also, obviously, you get a cool collectible, a piece of swag, whatever you, you want to call it. Uh, and if you do happen to buy anything from my Teespring, if you send me a picture of the item via social media, you know, my Twitter is at they call me DSP, I would be more than happy to share a picture of that with my over 25,000 Twitter followers so we can all take a look at how awesome the stuff is, all right? So thanks to anyone who has bought something from my Teespring in the past or to anyone considering to buy something in the future. Again, thank you very much. I do appreciate that. <clears throat> all right, and then, last but certainly not least, folks, if you would like a shout-out during today's stream, keep in mind this is going to be an online multiplayer stream, so I'll basically just be doing funny online stuff. It's not like it's a super serious game with story elements or anything like that. Apparently it has none. Um, I should have plenty of time to do shout outs for those of you who cheer with bits, subscribe to the channel or tip me during the course of today's stream. So if you do any of those things, I'd be more than happy to give you a shout out. All right. Now there's some criteria. Number one, please be concise. If you do any of those things and leave me a ginormous paragraph of 14 sentences, I'm probably not going to read the whole thing. In addition, if you're doing completely off topic or you're trying to be incendiary and start a fight or start insults or whatever, you know, I'm probably not going to read it, especially, you know, people who insult me. No, I'm not going to be reading your messages, uh, you know, on the stream. However, most people end up putting out, you know, some pretty nice things that either are interesting to respond to or, you know, are pretty funny or add to the stream. So thanks for that, guys. And, you know, looking forward to a fun interactive stream here with Sea of Thieves. Number two... If you would like a visual recognition for your contributions, well, if you cheer 50 bits or more, if you subscribe to the channel and you click the share button when you do, or if you tip me $5 or more, okay, any of those things, you'll actually get an on-screen pop-up thank you notification as well. So it's both visual and verbal recognition 
for your contributions. All right, pretty sweet. Now, in particular, there's two things that we're driving for right now this month. Number one, subscriptions. We're trying to hit a goal of 500 subscriptions by the end of the month, all right? <clears throat> With 11 days to go, it's very possible that we can hit the subscriptions goal by the end of the month. In particular, with all these new games I'll be playing and covering, hopefully you guys are excited to get in on this stream chat fun. You know, if you do subscribe to the channel, you get access to all of my emotes, including some of the, the newer fun ones, including the new DSP facepalm emote, the DSP Pepe emote. There's a bunch of good ones that people really seem to enjoy, okay? So, uh, you know, please consider subbing. Also, you earn the cool... Lo a crown chat badge. If you see people right now in the stream chat that have different colors of crowns, that's because they've been subscribers for different lengths of time. The bronze crown is for one month or above. The, the silver kicks in at three months, the gold at six, and then one year subs currently have a gold or crown encrusted with rubies. Now there is a two year crown. Of course, no one's hit that yet because I didn't start accepting subs until November of 2016. So come November of this year, we'll start seeing the diamond crown pop up, which will be pretty sweet. Okay, so thanks to everyone who's an ongoing sub. Please consider subbing if you like what you see and you want to get in on the fun with the, the, the emotes and everything. It's a good way to help out and it's a good way to get something for yourself as well. All right. <clears throat> now, last but not least, folks, and this is super serious, very important, which is why I have to bring it up here on the pre-stream. All right. Um, but I will try not to you know, let it just derail the stream, once gameplay starts, I'll be all about the game, all right? Ladies and gentlemen, I'm currently in a pickle. Here's the pickle I'm in. I moved across the country of the United States of America in 2014. I moved from the East Coast, Connecticut, the state of Connecticut, to the West Coast, the state of Washington. I primarily did it for my business. Taxes here are way lower. Internet's way better. You know, everything out here is a lot better for the kind of work that I do, all right? But my accountant at the time screwed me over. He assured me that he knew everything about taxes out here and would be able to keep doing my taxes properly. And he lied. He did not do due diligence. He did not do the proper research. And basically screwed everything up. So for three and a half years I was living here, I was supposed to be paying Washington State business and occupation taxes, and I did not because this guy is an idiot. And basically he took my money, thousands of dollars, without doing the work that he was supposed to be doing, uh, and, and got me in trouble because now I owe back taxes for living here for so long and not paying the state business and occupation tax, all right? That's number one. Number two, I had a big lump payment for these taxes due in January because I had to pay for the entire year of 2017's business taxes in January, and I didn't have it because I didn't even know that it existed, so I hadn't saved any money for it. So you guys really rallied at the end of 2017, and you guys helped me out tremendously, and because of your support on streams here, I was able to raise enough funds to pay the taxes for 2017, which was great. The problem being, because you guys rallied and helped me at the end of 2017, well, that kind of artificially increased my income for the year. So now the federal government wants me to pay more taxes to them because they think that I made way more than I had estimated. So they want more money. All right. So they want me to pay them a big lump sum of money by the middle of April. Plus, I've got these back taxes for the state of Washington that I'm supposed to be told what they are and how much I owe <clears throat> by April as well. Oh, by the way... The federal government also now wants me to pay the first estimated payment for my federal taxes for 2018. Guess when? In April. Now, normally this would be all right because normally I wouldn't have state back taxes or I wouldn't have leftover federal. I just have the one federal payment to do and I can afford it. But this year's different because I've got all these extenuating circumstances. Now, on top of all of this, okay, <laughs> on top of all this going on, the last two months, January and February on YouTube, have been my worst months ever. I've made the least amount of money I've ever made on YouTube, despite the fact that in the month of January, my views were higher than the entire year of 2017, except for one month. It was October of 2017, did better views-wise than January 2018 did. But I did so well in January, I exceeded my viewership than usual, everything went well, and they YouTube basically made me no money because their ad revenue is so bad right now because they lost all their major advertisers. It's terrible. Now, of course, everyone on YouTube is talking about this. It's not just me. There's a ton of big YouTubers who only or primarily rely on YouTube income, and they've all been talking about this recently. The good news for me is I diversified. 
I now have Patreon. I have Twitch income. I have all this other income. So it's not a horrendous, you know, world-ending situation for me that YouTube ad revenue has plummeted. However, it's bad for me now in particular because in April, I've got three big tax payments due and the, normally the money I would have raised on YouTube to pay it, I didn't make. So you see this conundrum I'm in? Uh, the good news is I have saved up some money, all right? Some money. But I have not saved up nearly enough for what I'm going to owe. Because not only am I going to owe whatever these state back taxes are, which I'm assuming, I'm just assuming, it's going to be five grand or more. That's what I'm thinking. I don't know for sure, but I'm assuming via what I owe, plus there's going to be fees and interest, I'm assuming it's going to be like $5,000. I don't have that. Then I'm assuming it's going to be at least a couple thousand dollars extra taxes for 2017 federal. That I pretty much have. That I can afford. But then whatever this new estimated tax payment for 2018 is going to be, I don't know what it's going to be because it's all reliant on the new tax code that the Republicans passed back in January. So I don't know. It could be big. It could be small. I don't know what it's going to be, but it's going to be based on my increased income from last year. So it's going to be more, more than likely than what I paid last year. Um, <clears throat> but the problem is it's all due at once. All this is due in April. Oh, by the way, one thing I haven't even brought up yet is that I have an, you know, a new accountant here in the state of Washington, who I have to pay to file all these taxes properly, and he's probably going to charge me $1,000. So, <laughs> you see my problem here? <clears throat> now, if you want to help me, all right, there's a couple ways that you can do it. You can either pledge to my Patreon, which I've already mentioned. You can buy something for my Teespring, which I've already mentioned. Or you can tip me during the live streams. If you tip me, the reason it helps me, just like the other two methods, is because I get these funds right away. Anything you tip during my live streams, I get immediately and I can put it towards the taxes. And I have been the past month. Any tips you guys have contributed, I've been saving. And they're going to go straight towards the taxes next month. All right. <clears throat> so thank you to everyone who has been very supportive in that method. Um, how do you tip? Well, right now there's two methods. You can either look below my stream if you're watching on, say, a desktop version of Twitch. If you look below my channel... There's a grid with all this information, links to like my websites, my other YouTube channels, the rules of the stream. There's also a section that says tips. You click on that, brings you to the tips page. You can either leave an anonymous tip or you can leave your name and a message in particular if you want a shout out during today's stream. It makes sense that you would do that, all right? Or if you're maybe watching on a mobile device, all right? If you're watching on a mobile device and you want to still tip, and you can't see all that information, if you type in exclamation point tip into the stream chat, it will bring up the link that you can click on. It'll bring you to the tips page as well. All right. Now, one final thing. One final thing, guys. Um, if, let's say, worst case scenario, I cannot pay these taxes in April, or maybe I could pay some of them, but not all of them. All right. Is it the end of the world? Doesn't mean I'm immediately going out of business, being thrown out in the streets. No, because the way it works is that what they're going to do is just hold me in arrears. I mean, they're going to say, well, you didn't pay all your taxes. You still got to pay them. But now there's going to be interest and fees accruing. OK, and it's just going to keep rolling and rolling along the course of 2018. Now, the bottom line is I absolutely need to pay all the taxes within a year. If I don't find a way to pay them all now, I'm screwed because now the government is going to put you know, all kinds of shit against me. It's not a good idea. It's not a good, you know, thing. So if I cannot get out of this tax situation, these rolling taxes that I may owe because I can't afford them, by the end of this year, I may have to sell my house because the house is the only thing I really have any value or equity in. I'm completely financially extended. You know, last year was a great year, 2017, because I adjusted <clears throat> from being a full-time YouTuber to being primarily a full-time streamer. I was able to survive. I could still afford all my bills. I was fine. I was at a good level where I was paying everything and everything was good. And then this stupid back tax situation hit me out of nowhere and completely screwed me over. And that's why I'm in the situation I'm in right now. Okay. So all that being said, all right, all that being said, um, thank you for guys for your support. Again, anything you contribute will go directly towards this. Um, please keep it in mind. And that is that. I'm not going to keep harping on it or mentioning it. It's hilarious to me. There's one thing I do want to address here before we do shout outs. Because I just got to say that the mentality of some people on the internet who are just so ignorant. All right. There are people right now on the internet who write about me or saying, Phil, all Phil ever does is talk about money. Right. This is what they say. Now, keep in mind, right now, this pre-stream segment, 
is the only time during today's stream that I'll talk about money. After this, I'm done. I'm going to be playing games, giving shout outs, you know, to people during the stream, doing co-op. That's it. I don't constantly stop and, and have ads in between shit. I don't have a million ad breaks during my streams. I don't advertise. Con it's one segment and that's it. It's done. But there are people out there who just talk shit constantly. Oh, all people, do all Phil ever does is talk about money. That's it. Well, wrong. And it's hilarious because in the link, did you see this guy, Ninja, the most popular streamer on Twitch who makes $500,000 a month playing Fortnite? He just got interviewed by a business station and he was amazing. He talked about how he doesn't think about money. Instead, he just plays the games he loves and then he made a million bajillion dollars and he donated 100000 to charity and he saves an animal a week and he does all this. If Phil was more like Ninja, then maybe he'd have more popularity, but instead he just sits on stream and talks about money all day. And that's why he's not popular. It's like, now wait a minute. Now wait a minute. Let's be real here. All right. Let's be fucking real. All right. <laughs> First of all, I'm not shit talking ninja whatsoever. I don't know anything about the guy. I'm not going, I've never seen a stream of his. I'm not going to say anything negative about the guy because that would be completely uh, irresponsible and unfair. I mean, to talk shit about someone you don't know and know nothing about. All right. Trust me. I've changed a lot. I'm not going to sit here and insult someone I know nothing about like I might have done years and years ago. That's not me anymore, all right? But what I will say is this. Look at Phil, right? Dark Side Phil from the years of 2010, late 2010, until I'd say 2013 or whatever, okay? <clears throat> so there you go. When I was making ridiculous amounts of money on YouTube, when YouTube ad revenues were sky high, Okay. When everything was good, I did, you know, I would, didn't have debt. I, you know, no, I had no financial issues at all. YouTube ad revenue had not plummeted yet. They didn't change their algorithms to screw me over and make it so that my videos don't show up in YouTube search. I hadn't gotten a plethora of false copyright strikes against me, seriously declining my income. None of this negative stuff had happened to me at all. All right. None. So of course, back then, if you look back at that Phil, all right, guess how different? That Phil never had to talk about, oh, pledge to my Patreon, buy something from my Teespring, send me tips. That Phil literally just sat here every day, played a game, recorded what he did, and uploaded it to YouTube, period. That was it. That was all you ever heard from me was me playing games, right? Now, when I stream, it's different. I have to advertise to make ends meet. Why? Because guess what? Because I'm not... 2013 or 2010 or 2012 fill anymore. YouTube ad revenue did plummet. My channel did get screwed. I did have to diversify and become a Twitch streamer. And I do have to advertise in order to make ends meet. This is all common sense. You know, and it's hilarious because people will say shit, talk shit about me. And they'll say, do you remember the time <clears throat> when Phil said he was going to be doing a giveaway and he gave away empty game boxes? <laughs> And this becomes like the mainstream meme about me is that Phil's giveaways, unlike other YouTubers and streamers who do these big fun giveaways and charity drives for their fans, Phil just gives away empty game boxes. Oh, but let's all forget the fact that for years I gave away, every month I gave away free games every single month during the hardcore gaming season. I gave away consoles. I gave away a PlayStation 4 console at launch that I bought with my own money. I gave it away to a viewer, a fan of mine. I gave away a collector's edition of, oh God, what game was it? It was like an 80, $90 collector's edition. I bought it myself and gave it away. I gave away copies of games, you know, back in the day, all the time when I could. All right. I, whenever I, you know, when I had financially feasible means to do great stuff, I did it. But people, what people want to do, they want to talk shit and act like, oh, Phil's always been a beggar and Phil's always done negative stuff. And look at Ninja. Ninja makes $500,000 a month playing one fucking video game. Why do you think Ninja can donate $100,000 and can rescue an animal a week and can do all those things? Because he has the means to do it. Stupid. <laughs> Just like I did. When I used to have that money, I did all kinds of amazing things. I had a P.O. box right? Where people would send me stuff and I would open things live on stream and then I would give back by doing donations and doing, you know, ra remember I used to do raffles? People would post on my forums and we'd have a raffle and we'd pick a winner and you'd get a free video game and stuff. I used to do all that stuff, you know? But that's, sadly, 
you know, back in the day. That's a time that has passed, you know. If I ever get back to that, absolutely I'll do that again. You know, I would love to do that positive stuff again. I loved doing it when I could do it. But what people want to do is basically spin whatever they can again to be negative about me. So, you know, once a day, I have a segment where I have to advertise. God forbid Phil advertise like every other streamer, right? And then I advertise, oh God, all Phil cares about is money and everything. It's ridiculous. It's absolutely ridiculous because it's completely untrue. It's just another negative thing people say. And again, they only want to remember the time that Phil gave away an empty game box. They don't want to remember the console, the collector's edition, the four or five straight years where I gave away like 10 games a year. You know, they don't want to talk about that. <clears throat> they just want to talk about the negative shit and make it me look like a villain. So whatever. You know what I mean? It is what it is. Um, it's stupid, in my opinion. And obviously, in most people's opinion, who actually know me. And that's why I'm only going to address it this once. It's just because, in particular, I saw someone post up on my forums the dumbest thread ever. Yeah, now, if Phil didn't always just ask for money constantly and was more like Ninja, he'd be a better person. And he, What the fuck are you talking about? If I didn't advertise, I wouldn't be here. Right? Last year, if I didn't change from being a YouTuber to a streamer, and I didn't advertise on stream, I would have already lost my house. I would have already lost everything. <laughs> but these are kids. These are dumb, immature kids who just don't understand how real life works. <clears throat> Alright. So there you go, folks. I'm very appreciative of anything that you guys contribute via, you know, anything. If you cheer sober tip, you'll get a shout out. If you tip me in particular, it helps me the most. Or, of course, if you pledge to my Patreon or Teespring. But being that you guys are here live on stream, I'm assuming you guys would probably prefer to get a shout-out on stream. So probably tips would be the best way to do it. Thank you guys for your contributions. Uh, I do appreciate the fact that you put up with the advertisement every day that I have to do. You know, it sucks that I have to do it. But it's just an inevitability of life, you know. If I were, again, the still in 2012 to 2013 and YouTube were still the land of milk and honey... For ad revenue on videos, I wouldn't ever have to ask you for anything. But those days, sadly, are gone. And maybe they'll come back someday. You know, we'll see. <clears throat> but we'll find out. We'll see how things go. Right now, things are going really good uh, in regards to uh, streaming. You know, my streaming's been doing really well. And I'm very appreciative of you guys' support. So if we can keep this up by the end of this year with all the new releases and everything, I mean, we may never have to talk about this shit ever again, which would be great. But for now, that's just the reality of it, all right? Sorry, but that's life, for me at least right now. All right, guys, let's do shout-outs. Let's go ahead and do some shout-outs for those who've uh, tipped, subbed, and cheered. All right, here we go. So hold on a second. All right, so we had a few people who cheered overnight when I wasn't even live streaming. I'm very appreciative of people who do contribute overnight when I'm not even streaming because it means you guys keep me in mind when I'm not even live, which is pretty crazy, all right? So, Bleh. oh my God, excuse me. Shout out to Cody Carls, who cheered and said, even if I'm in the minority, I actually enjoyed watching you replay games from your past so far this year, but finally getting some new games and content is a breath of fresh air too. And I agree with Cody Carls here. I think what's happened is January was a good month for me because I was going back and playing some of the viral games that I was known for on the internet. You know, I played Metal Gear Solid 2 and 3 again, and everyone absolutely wanted to see that, right? <clears throat> then, Dragon Ball Fighters came out, and I played the beta, and I played the final game. That was hype. You know, it's still the biggest fighting game there is right now. Um, you know, I played it for a bit. People enjoyed watching me play. I did pretty good. You know, I had a really good win-loss ratio, and people really seemed to, to enjoy watching me do that. So, you know, the beginning of this year had a lot of momentum. But then what happened? February, I mean, there was nothing. There was like no new, everything was a re-release or a sequel that no one cared about. You know what I mean? So really, for the past month and a half, two months, I haven't played anything new until today with Sea of Thieves. So I could certainly understand why some people got burnt out or like, man, this is boring. You know, can't wait for the new stuff. So here we are. Finally, we're here today. It begins. Mr. Swaggins cheered and said the Far Cry 5 season pass is actually looking really good. Uh, you get three expansions. Uh, one will take you back in time to Vietnam. The next one will have zombies. And the last one will take you to Mars to fight aliens. Seems pretty wacky. That seems insane. Like, if anything, it sounds to me, if you guys remember in Far Cry 3, they had that standalone expansion. What was it? Blood Dragon. 
Now, that had nothing to do with Far Cry 3's plot, but it had the same similar gameplay elements. <clears throat> and a lot of references to, like, 1980s culture. And people really liked it because it was so weird. I think, it sounds to me, that's what they're going for with the Far Cry 5, you know, season pass. If I like Far Cry 5, maybe I'll get it. But we'll see, because I'm really worried, sadly, that Far Cry 5 may end up kind of being the same kind of game as Far Cry 3 and 4 with n minimal changes. And if it is, I don't know how much I'm going to like it because I've already played that game twice. You know what I mean? Uh, but I guess we'll see if they've you know modernized it, improved it. We'll find out. All right, Mr. Swing is chewed again. He said, I actually used a uh, used a random name generator uh, for your name. And it gave you this. Garrick Bonnie B.B. Smith, the stranded sailor of Zombie Cove. This pirate is wandering the shore looking for ships, not lost, just wants something to aim a cannon at. Huh. So apparently there's a, a random pirate name generator. Huh. <clears throat> I wonder, do you, when you boot the game, do you create your pirate? I'm assuming you do. I'm going to have to make up like salty sea dog fill or something. <laughs> All right. Well, we'll see what happens when I boot up here. Shout out to Aussie Sly 47 Adam, who also did a 100-bit cheer. So thank you to everyone who did contribute overnight. I appreciate it, guys. All right. Now, let's go ahead and let's continue. Shout out to Jonas D89 who did a 100-bit cheer. Thank you very much, Jonas D89, for the 100-bit cheer. Murdoch did a 50-bit cheer. He says, one who plays Sea of Thieves and uses voice chat is required to, by law, to sound like a pirate at all times. Arr! Here be booty, me, me mateys. Let's go out on the seven seas and pick Swiss cheese out of them. Well, there you go. All right, we'll see. <laughs> uh, Toss Munkas. Did a 95-bit cheer and says, Phil, this game was in development for four years with no story and it's a full price 60 bucks and repetitive enemies and empty world. All right. Well, first of all, that sounds like a very critical cheer of the game. Um, as I've said, I myself have not played the game at all. All right. <clears throat> I myself um, have not seen any real trailer. I mean, I saw a little bit of gameplay from E3 and a couple trailers here or there. I have not watched anyone play the game. And I did not participate in the betas. So I know nothing whatsoever in regard to what content is actually in or not in the game. We're going to find out firsthand this week as I play the game, right? Um, this game never was going for story. This was a game that was similar to many other of these big co-op games in this day and age. It was solely going purely on a pure co-op experience with other people, you know, more of a game where it's fun to play with your buddies or, or friends or, you know, even viewers and do co-op shenanigans in it rather than focus on, uh, you know, uh, an in-depth story that you'll play by yourself and stuff like that. I know that for a fact, all right? Now, um, I don't know about the Retsy saying, repetitive enemies in empty world. I mean, we'll see. We'll find out firsthand. Now, $60. Now, that I have to contest. Because the truth of the matter, folks, is true. Yes, if you buy this game full price, it's 60 bucks. But there are, like, multiple ways to avoid that. Like me, I'm playing it for free. I signed up for Xbox Game Pass. It's a 14-day trial that I signed up for last night. So I get this game for free for two weeks. And then, if I want to continue playing it, right, then I pay $10 a month to continue playing it until I've decided I either want to buy it full price or I just don't want to play it anymore, in which case I stop paying the $10 a month. I'm not paying 60 bucks for this, you know, and honestly, that's one of the reasons, major reasons why I am covering it, because I don't have to dump 60 bucks into a game that, uh, you know, I might not like, you know, and that's good. You know what? I honestly think that uh, the way that they're doing it, okay, is good. I think the way that they're handling it with these Xbox exclusive games uh, makes sense because the bottom line is a lot of people don't want to sink 60 bucks as an investment into a game like Sea of Thieves if they don't know it's something they're going to get hooked on and want to keep playing long term. Some people are like, well, I'd love to try it, but I'm not going to pay, spend $60 and then end up getting bored with it within a week and I wasted my money. So doing it this way, you get a taste of it. If you like it, well, then eventually you either buy it or you keep doing the subscription fee so Microsoft makes out no matter what. So I actually think this works. However, I mean, it may result in a lot of money lost for Microsoft because let's face it, what if a lot of people play Sea of Thieves and don't like it? After a few days, they're bored. Maybe what, what it, like what Toss Monkus is saying, well, it's not worth it. You know, it's not worth 60 bucks because there's not enough content. If that's true, a lot of people might just say, well, <clears throat> I'm tapping out. 
I'm done here. I'm not going to replay, repay for the Microsoft Game Pass or whatever, or I'm just not going to buy the game. And then Microsoft lost. You know, I'm playing it for free for two weeks. They'll make no money on me if I stop playing it. So I guess we'll find out. <laughs> I guess we'll find out. All right. Mr. Swaggins cheered again. He said, can you live stream E3 so we can all react together? You can give thoughts at the end too. That would be cool. No. As I've said one bajillion times, I do not support the practice of live reactions to trailers and streams in E3. and It's stupid. All it is is people overreacting on purpose, showing you crazy facial expressions so that you'll stupidly watch and or send them money because you think it's funny. It's dumb. For me, as an intelligent adult who's covered video games for my entire life and has done coverage of E3 for 10 years, I'm going to do it like I always do. I'll watch the press conferences with you guys together, but we'll be interacting in stream chat during them. I'll be taking copious notes, and then immediately following each press conference, I will do a live stream of my thoughts and reactions and summary of what I thought. Not a live facial reaction stream that little kids like to watch. I'm not going to do that shit. I'm above it. So there. No, I'm not doing that. <clears throat> Golden Nobles. Subscribe to the channel. Thank you very much, Golden Nobles, uh, for your sub. I appreciate that. Yolo Dapper did a 25-bit cheer. He says, Phil, it's actually a very good thing that you diversified with Twitch. Uh, Review Tech USA didn't. And now he cries on Twitter every day. Now, that this is obviously subjective. And I'm not saying this, guys. This is someone else. I don't know. I don't follow Review Tech on Twitter. Please don't go to him and say, Phil said you cry on Twitter. I never said that. All right, well, anyway, this guy says he cries on Twitter every day about his videos being demonetized, even though he puts many hours into making them. Um, I'll be honest with you, Yellow Dauber. I sympathize with Rich because guess what? I was in the same boat, right? All my videos on YouTube getting demonetized. Ad revenue on YouTube, even when my videos aren't demonetized, is in the toilet. And I had a whole channel in 2016, dedicated to in-depth game reviews, countdowns, and the like called KO Gaming, a channel that took off on YouTube, went viral, had a, a, one video with a million views, other videos with tens of thousands to hundreds of thousands of views. These videos were making me tons of money. I made, no lie, thousands of dollars in 2016 as a result of KO Gaming, which was great. I certainly wasn't expecting that, right? <clears throat> the problem is... By the end of 2016, early 2017, YouTube turned on their demonetization algorithm, and guess what happened? I'm not exaggerating here. Every single video that I'd ever created for and put up on KO Gaming was demonetized. In fact, the channel was considered YouTube blacklisted. And what that means is even if I uploaded a video without a title, without tags, and without any information... The, the, the video would still become demonetized. Yes. Can you believe that? It's stupid as hell. Uh, how can you tell me that that is legit? That this algorithm, that there's no title, no tags, no video description, right? And the video is just an edited game review with no swears in it, is demonetized automatically by YouTube, right? It's bullshit. And it seems to me a lot of YouTubers, sadly are in this situation um, where, you know, your primary uh, source of income and or your primary content that you would put out for the internet was edited style videos and you put a lot of time and effort, hours and hours of work. You know, for me, but to put out an edited review took me, you know, eight hours or more. And to immediately become demonetized and it takes like a day or two days to get ads back on that video. So now all the views you bring in the first two days don't count. You make no money. That's insane. That's absolutely insane. And I 100% agree with Rich that it's bullshit. And I sympathize with the guy because he does have quite a good following on YouTube. He's got a dedicated fan base. I mean, yes, he's got dedicated haters just like me too. But he puts effort into his stuff. You know what I mean? Like, you can tell. He doesn't just fucking, you know, throw any old thing. He puts time and effort into his edited videos. He puts thought into what he wants to cover. You know, he's got a following for what he does. Do I personally agree with the kind of video he puts out? Not really. I don't think that daily vloggers who just talk about random news stories and drama and shit, I don't believe in that. You know, I've never done that kind of stuff for YouTube and I never will. But that doesn't mean that he doesn't have a following and he doesn't have a right to make money and make a living. He does. And it's messed up that YouTube has fucked him over. But you're absolutely right, Yellow Dopper. I'm actually pretty lucky 
in the fact that I decided to diversify myself in the way that I have so that I'm not all eggs in one basket anymore. I was for a long time. It was all eggs in one basket, YouTube or nothing. Then I started Patreon. Then I started Teespring. Then I diversified and started streaming on Twitch. Now, if any one thing goes wrong, at least there's other things I can jump to. You know what I mean? Um, In fact, I hate the fact that I rely on YouTube income at all, but I still do. You know, I still bring in between one to two million views a month on my DSP gaming channel, and it still brings in significant income that I rely on. You know, it sucks that I can't really do anything about the fact that ad, ad revenue is so bad on YouTube right now, but it is what it is, right? Um, All right, so very nice. Thank you for the cheer. Yolo Dapper. <clears throat> Miser just cheered. Thousand bits. Thank you very much, Miser, for the large cheer. In fact, you are the cheerleader for today's stream. Thank you very much. He says, you have my support, Phil. I'm new to the channel, but I love watching your streams and playthroughs. What's your most favorite playthrough that you've done? Oh, man. I would probably say either either Heavy Rain back in the day, the first run that I ever did, because that was like an interactive murder mystery. Even I didn't know what was going on. I didn't spoil myself on the plot. And being able to, to share that experience live with everyone on a daily basis was really awesome. <clears throat> I would also say, if you could believe this, Bioshock Infinite. Because I remember when that game came out, it was the year that I had started uh, direct capture and live streaming. And quite frankly, even though I had done other games, Bioshock Infinite was like the first really big release triple a release that i ever live streamed and it was just such an amazing experience i had thousands of people on stream every day watching me play this new game it was such a different thing for me than when i had just played games offline for youtube it was such an eye-opening experience for me um <clears throat> and then quite frankly recently i would say probably some of the streams that i've done for the holidays i really enjoyed doing like holiday themed content you know, the Christmas marathon was really fun. Uh, the Christmas day stuff we did was really fun. You know, it's very different having this interactive style versus, again, having to make really highly developed, thought out, and edited content for YouTube. Now I can just do fun events on the fly on Twitch and interact with you guys, just have a ton of fun. Um, and it really, and also I'll say this, the PUBG stuff, even though a lot of people seem to hate it, when I play PUBG, I have more time to talk with you guys than a normal game. And I love the interactions that I do. And it just, to me... It feels awesome to be able to have that interactivity with you. So even though the PUBG gameplay is kind of shitty, those streams are really awesome, and I like those too. So there you go. Lots and lots of answers for you. <clears throat> All right. Well, we've got Sea of Thief, who's obviously a troll, who did a troll cheer. And he says, Phil, I recall you saying that our tips and subs in 2017 helped you move Cat into your place, and that was part of your push for the holidays. Wrong. You are an idiot. That is not what happened at all, and I never said that. You just listen to what the detractors say about me. That's not what I said. What I said was, Cat wants to move in with me, but we certainly cannot do that if I have these tax issues lingering on the home. And for example, if I can't pay these taxes in January 2018, there's no reason for her to move in because already we're going to have tax issues and liens and you know interest accruing and back fees and everything. And if I can't pay the taxes for the house, why am I going to move her in if by, you know, the first quarter of the year, I got to put the house on the market. That's what I said. And what happened was people really rallied in late 2017. They helped me out. And I was able to pay that first tax payment that was due in January, which then initiated the process by which she said, oh, now she can move in because at least, at the very least, we'll have the rest of the year to see what happens with the new taxes. That's what happened. And I've explained this a million times publicly, but the small, immature children of the internet just spin it in one way. And ignorant people like you, see of Thief, Listen to them like morons instead of actually listening to what I say and you take what they say as truth when it's not. So that's on you, not on me. Don't be stupid and ignorant. It's that simple. <laughs> All right. Captain DCW just cheered. He said, hi, Phil. What's going on, Captain DCW? I actually haven't seen you around for a bit. Good to see you back. Hope that Sea of Thieves maybe is a new entertaining thing for you today. Okay. Uh, Eternal Napalm did a 50-bit cheer. He says, how do people find the time to create multiple fake accounts just to troll you? Well, they have no lives. When you have no life, when you have nothing positive going on for you, you take that time that you have that you have nothing to do with and you spend it doing negative shit instead. So instead of going out and seeking friends or hobbies or significant other, these people prefer to just sit and be miserable at home constantly and do negative shit to people on the internet. You know, it's, it's pathetic. And it's sad in a lot of ways, but 
That's life for some people, I guess. Uh, sea of Thief did another cheer that was literally almost the same thing he said before. I'm not even going to bother. I'm just not going to bother with it. He's an idiot. Uh, Golden Nobles. <clears throat> Golden Nobles just did a 500-bit cheer. Thank you very much, Golden Nobles, for the cheer. I appreciate that. Thank you very much. Battle Duck 9000 did a 100-bit cheer. He said, Shiver Me Timbers, new game height. Thank you, Battle Duck, for the cheer. Appreciate that. JP did a 1,000-bit cheer, and he's now tied for top cheer of the day. Thank you, JP. He says, hang in there. Keep up the positivity. Now that the new games are coming out, everything can only get better. Keep up the great work and the awesome streams. Thank you very much, JP. Appreciate that, man. Arm Cannon 09 cheered and said, ever thought of launching a separate YouTube channel for edited content while keeping DSP Gaming for raw content? That's exactly what I did, Arm Cannon, in 2016. KO Gaming was my channel for edited content. DSP Gaming was for the raw gameplay. Sadly, KO Gaming was 100% demonetized by YouTube, despite the fact that it was just edited, very professional made, uh, game reviews and countdowns. It had nothing on there that would be considered offensive whatsoever. YouTube erroneously demonetized all the videos, and I said, to hell with it. It's just not worth it anymore. Dai Hikse, apologies if I did not pronounce your name correctly, because I have no idea how to pronounce that, tipped me $5. <clears throat> and he says, hey, Phil, breaking news, Daniel Bryan is cleared by WWE. Pfft, wow, that is breaking news. I didn't hear that. He said, what do you think about the final deletion, or have you not seen it yet? I believe you're talking about the ultimate deletion, not the final deletion. Final deletion was the TNA uh, deal that the Hardys did. <clears throat> the ultimate deletion was Matt Hardy versus Bray Wyatt, which happened last night on Monday Night Raw. Yes, I did see it. It was every bit as silly as I think the final deletion was. But I do think that it's it, the, the sad part here, even though you could tell they put a lot of effort into it, um, it doesn't have the charm of the original because really all it was was they basically tried to redo what they did with Final Deletion and make it like a very C-movie, cheesy-esque, you know, guerrilla-style, homemade video, backyard wrestling kind of a deal. Um, and I don't know if that translates well to WWE TV. It was funny in TNA because TNA was already so pathetic and falling apart that to see them put that on the show and go viral was actually hilarious. But to put it on WWE TV, I don't know if it really worked. Plus, like I said, it really did feel like they were just redoing it. It felt like it was the same thing that you've seen. You know what I mean? It didn't, it didn't seem like it was original. Like, a lot of the stuff was referenced to the final deletion, the old one. But at the same time, it was kind of like, nah, they didn't. It wasn't so very... It was like, let's redo it, you know, so that people who didn't see the final deletion, you know, can see it for the first time. So it wasn't as good as it could have been, in my opinion. There you go. <clears throat> Shout out to Nirvana3000, who did a cheer and said, you deserve a vacation after all this tax stuff. <laughs> <sighs> yeah, I wish I could take one. Um... I do, but I, you know, no time soon will I be taking any kind of a vacation. I even said, you know, my birthday is coming up, first week of April. I would love to take some time off, but I, I can't. I'm going to be in the midst of new releases, and I need to raise money for my taxes, so I can't take time off. Maybe in like May, early May, if I get through the tax situation in April, if in early May, maybe I can take a couple days off just to relax a little bit. But right now, there's really no chance of that because I just got to work my ass off for these taxes. So, uh, Dai Hikse, also subscribe to the channel. Thank you for the sub, Dai Hikse. I appreciate that. Ultimate Reuter cheered and said, Salty Sea Dog Hype. Murdoch cheered. He said, It is sad that just because of a few complaints from advertisers, the huge business that YouTube just bends over and takes it. Yeah, well, that's how, that's how business works. You know, it's kind of like, um, <clears throat> how do they say? First impressions are everything. Okay, so that being said, YouTube was known as the big video sharing website. Everyone knew that, but YouTube had never really gotten into hot water for anything. Okay, then all of a sudden, it finally gets its first negative press, and sadly, its first negative press was horrible. Its first negative press was YouTube puts advertisements on videos from terrorists and racists. So now advertisers are pulling out. So now any advertiser who's looking to advertise immediately has heard that story is going to say, Oh, well, fuck that. I'm never going to advertise on YouTube, right? Even though it may not be the true statement that that was happening all the time. And no, it wasn't like <clears throat> all the ads were going to racists or whatever. But that's kind of the impression you get from the, the media coverage that happened. I compare this to the launch of the Xbox One, where when Don Matrick first presented it at E3, he was like, oh... 
the Xbox One will only have uh, online, you know, online only. You have to be online to play games. Who doesn't have internet? Someone on a submarine? <laughs> oh, by the way, you can't trade in games. That's gone. You know, he made all these announcements about Xbox One. And eventually, gamers flipped so hard on him. Not only did he get fired from the company, but they ended up changing the Xbox One to be basically an Xbox 360 again. Okay, they got rid of all that shit they were talking about. Uh, but it was hilarious because months later, I remember I was waiting in line to buy Grand Theft Auto V. This is a true story. <clears throat> I was waiting in line at GameStop to pick up my copy of Grand Theft Auto V. And there were two kids in front of me in line, two teenagers talking about it. And they were like, man, I'm not getting that Xbox One. Didn't you hear? You can't trade the games in. You got to be online only. You have, always have to have internet. And I'm listening to them. I'm like, dude, this was at E3 they announced that. And that was dis- that was changed like a week later. So here it was, you know, like September, October, November. These kids still thought that something that had happened in June was still true. So, you know, even though YouTube has done all these things to change, oh, now we have these demonetization algorithms and we make sure ads go to the right places and we made it so small YouTube channels don't get ads anymore. Even though they've done all these positive changes and on their side, their opinion, by the way, I'm not saying they're positive. They think they are. To try to attract advertisers, the common advertiser doesn't care. All the common advertiser ever heard was, well, YouTube puts videos on racist and terrorist videos, so fuck it, I'm never advertising there ever again. And that's it. So it's sad. You're right. It's sad that now everyone suffers because YouTube didn't know how the fuck to run their business. It's terrible. <clears throat> Romy Rowe did 100-bit cheer. He said, have a great stream, Phil. Thank you, Romy. Mr. Swaggins, excuse me, cheered. He said, I'm not saying E3 stream fake reactions. I was saying do it so there could be a discussion in chat and stuff, and I'm sure you would get a decent amount of viewers. Still would be more beneficial than just uploading to YouTube, in my opinion. I mean, it would be... (sighs) What's the point? (laughs) What's the difference between me having a live stream or a camera on my face showing my face superimposed over the E3 press conference, and I'm just sitting there stoically taking notes and maybe typing something in the stream chat every once in a while, or... Me not doing that and just doing my stream immediately after with my reaction. It doesn't make any sense. Oh, my God. Anyway, Big Daddy David cheered. He's I've been watching you for a few months. Wow. He's a 5'11 ripped muscular male, and he's happy to support my channel. Well, it's always good to know we have ripped Adonises out there who like my content. Battle Duck just did a 300-bit cheer and said, Random cheer of the day. Thank you, Battle Duck. <clears throat> the Wanderer 1800 tipped me a dollar and says, if you haven't given up on PSVR yet, might I recommend the Rick and Morty virtual reality game? Sadly, I pretty much have. PSVR is like a failed experiment, in my opinion. It was a gimmick that I liked for a month, and then very shortly I started getting motion sick and stuff from the games. And then when I started to play games, you know, like uh, Resident Evil 7 in it, I really didn't think it added anything to the game. And I haven't used it in over a year. And I really have no plans to, because now I'm an interactive live streamer. I need to be able to read the stream chat and messages from people. And I can't do that with a giant domed headset over my eyeballs that makes my face fucking sweat. And really doesn't have any great killer app games at all. So, sadly, I doubt I'll be using it ever again. Unless there really is a killer app, a reason to use VR, but I have never heard of one. Everyone always kind of says, eh, the VR games are kind of meh. <laughs> <coughs> Haseo X4 cheered and said, while playing Sea of Thieves, what are the odds that you'll be raided by Captain Kenway from Assassin's Creed Black Flag or get recruited by Captain Jack Sparrow for some amazing adventure? Uh, Zero. The chances are 0% because those characters are owned by other companies and licenses, and I'm sure they didn't pay the licensing fees to have those characters in the game, so the chance is zero. Shout out to Ali Guy. Who did a 100-bit cheer? He says, Phil, you should launch the game. That is very true, Ali, but I do have to finish with shout-outs. I can't just not launch the game ever just because, you know, or uh, because people are, are cheering. But at the same time, I do have an obligation to give people a shout-out because that's how it works when you do interactive streams on Twitch. So I'm almost done. King of Hypocrisy cheered and said, I want to get ripped like you were in college. Can you tell me about the workout routine you did? No. Okay. I think now we're done. I think we've finally gotten through all of it. By the way, once again, my pre-stream was done after about 25 minutes. (laughs) But it was the shout-outs that took so long. So, okay, everybody. Thank you very much. I appreciate the support, everyone. Thank you for your cheer subs and tips so far. Okay, remember that if you do uh, contribute during today's stream, you will get a shout-out. In particular, your tips are the best way you can help me out right now with this tax situation coming up. 
Uh, we got another cheer from Mr. Swaggins, who says, what are you go going to live stream? Uh, you reading from notes from E3 or just upload it to YouTube like the weekend preview? I'm hella confused. Mr. Swaggins, I get the feeling you have never seen my E3 coverage. We'll talk about that when we get towards E3. Let's relax. This is not a stream to be discussing E3. E3 is a good three months away. We don't have to worry about it right now, okay? <clears throat> All right. Thank you guys very much. I appreciate your support. And now let us end the pre-stream. Let's boot the game. I'll get inside the game. Get to the point where you can form a party. We'll form a party. We'll see if the voice chat works. And then we'll play Sea of Thieves, me mateys. Yes. Ben Boxer Cheers says, What video games are you looking forward to the most this year? Uh, sea of Thieves, because I'd like to play it. But the cheers are holding me off, so I'm going to play it now. Mr. Swaggins just cheered. He said, No, I have to. I just watched them when they uploaded to YouTube. Oh, my God. All right. Enough is enough. No more talk about E3. We're going to start now with Sea of Thieves. I'm putting my foot down. We're starting now. All right. Thank you, guys. Let's begin. Holy shit. <laughs>